Okay, uh, we will uh, uh, quickly go through the slides we saw uh, yesterday, uh, the uh, Gothic slides, and uh, we will then uh, continue with the uh, Gothic to uh, have a brief look at uh, the variations in uh, England, a few uh, English uh, examples. And then uh, I will uh, show you uh, a few uh, slides at the very end of the uh, class to uh, show uh, two traditions of uh, architecture and how uh, they are uh, reflected uh, almost to our time. Uh, after the uh, Gothic uh, period. Okay, so uh, we said that uh, the uh, uh, Gothic uh, church uh, bought uh, a, a primary attraction in the uh, town. As you see uh, here, uh, the small scale of the buildings uh, all around, and then the aspiring uh, towers, the uh, attenuated uh, visual uh, language, vertically uh, reaching higher and uh, higher, uh, drew uh, attention uh, to it. It's almost like a big ship uh, sailing uh, within the uh, uh, city uh, itself. And the focus is unquestionably uh, on it. So uh, this goes hand in hand with the uh, purpose of the church, which was to uh, teach I mean, Christianity, uh, to uh, set the uh, example, so the architecture as a, a focus in the uh, city uh, fabric carries out that, uh, that uh, purpose. With the Gothic architecture, we said that there is uh, a, a new uh, structural uh, theory and which uh, goes with it a new uh, aesthetic. There is a uh, balance of uh, forces which uh, becomes uh, reflected in uh, also an uh, aesthetic uh, perception. And uh, this is based uh, very much on the uh, experience, the uh, experience, the uh, evolution of the uh, structure, uh, whereby uh, the uh, three tier interior uh, facade of the uh, nave. Uh, goes through a number of uh, alterations which is worked out by uh, uh, varying the uh, proportions of the elements you see uh, here. The uh, basic configuration was the uh, nave arcade, the uh, tiforium, and then the uh, clerestory. Uh, the uh, tiforium uh, part initially uh, came into uh, being to mask the uh, leaning uh, roofs of the uh, aisles, but then it uh, became a uh, gallery in some uh, examples, and uh, the variations that we saw uh, yesterday showed to us uh, the uh, uh, truncating, the uh, shortening, or the uh, lengthening uh, vertically of these various uh, components, which uh, in turn uh, affected the way the uh, ribbed vaults were uh, configured. Uh, the major alteration was the uh, rectangular uh, bay, which uh, allowed, through the use of the uh, pointed uh, arch, a uh, similar height, but uh, arches of uh, uh, different uh, widths, which uh, liberated the uh, interior configuration of the uh, Gothic uh, church. The uh, supports were uh, channeled into uh, various ways. The, uh, the thrusts of the uh, rib walls were uh, channeled uh, below to the um, uh, attenuated uh, piers, and then they were also <laughs> reflected outside through uh, flying buttresses uh, to the uh, major uh, buttressing uh, piers, which were uh, further uh, anchored by uh, pinnacles. So with this uh, basic uh, system, there was a, a tremendous uh, alteration within the uh, interior and exterior configuration of the uh, church. And uh, the uh, most uh, groundbreaking uh, uh, manifestations of this were carried out in uh, French cathedrals. Um, so in the Romanesque architecture, even though uh, the uh, massive, uh, rather massive configuration 
that we saw uh, in uh, England, in France, had uh, similarities <laughs> as the Gothic period went on when we uh, compare the French and the uh, English Gothic, for example, the uh, differences are perhaps more striking than similarities. Uh, after the uh, 12th uh, century, we find that uh, this uh, mastery, this uh, structural uh, mastery attained by uh, French master masons and uh, the uh, mastery attained by the uh, British stone uh, masons uh, took uh, different uh, turns. They were both very, very skillful, but the overall uh, effect in uh, plans, in uh, heights, and then the uh, configuration of the different uh, vaults that were uh, formulated uh, allow us to uh, make a kind of a uh, difference, which you shall also uh, see uh, shortly when we uh, get to the British examples. Uh, we uh, also emphasized uh, yesterday that uh, the uh, Gothic structural uh, experiments did not uh, originate in one day after the 12th century. Uh, the the uh, pointed arch, uh, the uh, piers, the uh, rip vaults were already uh, experimented with uh, the, in sporadic fashion in uh, Romanesque architecture, but uh, it took the uh, 12th century and beyond to consolidate all of these in uh, one uh, building which uh, altered and uh, revolutionized the uh, design of uh, churches. An important example in this uh, respect is the uh, church uh, of uh, the Abbey Church of uh, Saint Denis in uh, France, which was uh, the uh, church of uh, the Abbot Suger, uh, S U G E R. Uh, Abbot uh, Suger uh, was not the originator of the uh, church, but in his uh, renovation of the uh, church, he uh, utilized some of the uh, new uh, examples which we can uh, see. So if we look at the, uh, the Saint Denis uh, church uh, here, we see that uh, while the core is still the uh, basilical uh, plan, uh, the uh, chevet has become uh, very, very uh, sophisticated and uh, the uh, unity of the uh, inside with uh, the uh, bays uh, being uh, subject to uh, one uh, another uh, give the uh, clues to what will follow uh, later on in uh, the uh, development of the uh, Gothic. The uh, sophistication of the uh, chevet uh, here by thinning out the uh, supports created a sophisticated array of uh, ribbed uh, vaults, which you see uh, here, uh, allowing uh, distance, uh, breaking the uh, light with the uh, light coming in from these uh, different uh, chapels and uh, giving this variegated, uh, very uh, kinetic uh, effect and a certain amount of uh, tension, spatial uh, tension, as you uh, move <coughs> around the uh, ambulatory. So, looking inside the uh, Saint Denis, uh, you see an overall uh, unity uh, here. Yes, uh, there is a quest to get uh, higher and higher. Uh, the uh, verticality stemming all the way from the ground uh, to the clerestory uh, level and uh, becoming uh, resolved in the uh, uh, roof, the uh, stone uh, roof, has a longitudinal interior, but the focus is uh, very, very uh, clear. Uh, from the uh, entrance, you clearly uh, see the uh, lit up uh, chevet uh, at the uh, end. Uh, it is uh, uh, not ambiguous, uh, it is the uh, focus and uh, the uh, sophisticated <laughs> chevet uh, warrants uh, this. From the uh, outside, uh, you see the, uh, the windows are becoming verticalized, they are becoming uh, high. Uh, rose windows are being uh, experimented with. The portals are still a little bit like uh, Romanesque portals uh, here. They are rather uh, massive and they have not uh, attained that uh, lace-like, uh, fibrous uh, uh, resolution 
that we see in the Rems Cathedral or in the Amia that uh, we uh, saw uh, yesterday. And uh, uh, the, um, the overall uh, configuration of the uh, inside with the uh, unity that we mentioned a moment ago can be seen uh, even uh, better in a charter. Uh, here, you don't even have that very longitudinal part. You have a sophisticated uh, shimmy. In fact, it is even uh, more sophisticated than that of uh, Saint Denis. The uh, chapels uh, are not even uh, uniform. Uh, they are not uh, scalloped as in Saint Denis, but they are variegated. Uh, and uh, what is uh, more, the uh, extension of the uh, bays uh, here uh, give a more spacious kind of uh, interior. We cannot talk about a centralized space uh, here, but that uh, very thin, uh, you know, uh, uh, long longitudinality is uh, rather uh, broken. So here, uh, in this uh, part of the uh, church, when you uh, look at the uh, shade, the focus is still quite clear. The uh, height uh, draws the eye uh, upward, but uh, the uh, light that uh, comes in you know, from the uh, sides gives a rather uh, airy, uh, spacious uh, feeling to uh, this uh, church, not a dark, you know, uh, mysterious uh, configuration. The uh, vaulting is uh, very uh, experienced, as you uh, can see. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, transverse uh, arches, uh, which we uh, had seen in the Romanesque, have totally uh, disappeared here, and everything is uh, reduced to uh, ribs, opening up the uh, clerestory uh, level. In the Chartres Cathedral, uh, for example, we have the, um, the, the arcade here, the uh, arcade, then we have the uh, triforium, and we have the uh, clerestory. And uh, the uh, triforium, which uh, before uh, Chartres, in some examples, had been converted to a gallery, a, a wide you know, gallery, almost uh, like the uh, arcade here, uh, has uh, not been uh, utilized. So uh, uh, everything uh, does not uh, progress in a, a linear uh, fashion. There is a lot of give and take. Uh, sometimes certain elements are used altogether. Some uh, progressive elements which were seen are rejected. They go back to the earlier experiment. And in the shelter, we can say that uh, they go back to the triforium, and we don't have a, a four-tier uh, facade uh, here. So that's a part of the uh, variation. Uh, the uh, spaciousness that uh, we saw in uh, Chartres can also be seen in Notre Dame <coughs> in uh, Paris. Uh, again, uh, you uh, have the uh, uh, variation <coughs> of the uh, uh, ribbed uh, walls in the uh, chevet, but uh, they have become a bit more regularized compared with uh, <coughs> with uh, the Chartres or uh, Saint Denis, but there are uh, buttresses on the uh, outside. But you see that uh, to accommodate the uh, pilgrims that uh, come in uh, larger numbers, uh, the uh, ambulatories are uh, extended uh, throughout. So the pilgrims can come in, they can uh, participate in the uh, liturgical uh, ceremonies, but they can also watch the uh, relics. Uh, in the Europe of the uh, Middle uh, Ages, traveling in the summer was uh, very, very uh, difficult and arduous. These were long, uh, hardship to the Latin uh, trips. Uh, in the uh, winter, uh, such a travel was almost impossible. So uh, the uh, traveling that uh, occurred uh, was not like uh, today, people uh, going uh, everywhere from uh, one location to uh, another. Uh, the uh, people who uh, traveled the most were the uh, pilgrims. The uh, pilgrims who uh, went on a uh, religious uh, mission. Uh, they were uh, the uh, master uh, stone carvers who uh, traveled from one project to uh, another project. And of course, there were also the uh, Crusaders, the uh, organized uh, group of uh, young men who uh, gathered at certain uh, points to head to uh, the uh, holy uh, man, 
in one of the uh, six uh, crusades that uh, took part in 150 uh, years. So uh, when uh, people traveled, you know, long uh, distances, and then they came to the uh, church, obviously the church had to accommodate them. Uh, the church had to uh, display itself, uh, facilitating the uh, uh, navigation of these uh, people, the congregation of these people, allowing them to uh, watch the uh, windows, the uh, carved uh, art, as well as some of the uh, sacred uh, relics that uh, were uh, being uh, displayed. Uh, in the Notre Dame, uh, you see that uh, the, uh, uh, the Tiforium uh, has uh, given way to a gallery. Uh, unlike uh, Chartres, it is uh, possible to uh, walk uh, within this uh, gallery. So you have the uh, arcade, you know, gallery, and the uh, clerestory. And uh, all of it has uh, the uh, thin uh, vertical uh, accents that uh, go all the way to the uh, roof. And you see uh, little uh, the rose uh, windows, uh, you see uh, pointed uh, arches that are uh, finding uh, their way into the so-called uh, Lancet uh, windows. In Notre Dame, uh, though, uh, part of the uh, reason uh, why uh, the uh, massivity of the uh, wall became reduced to a uh, membrane allowing the uh, perforation was the uh, use of the so-called uh, flying uh, buttress, which uh, you see uh, uh, you know, on the uh, outside. And once you uh, free the load-bearing capacity of the uh, thick and massive wall that we are accustomed to from the uh, Romanesque, uh, then you have this uh, light uh, structure, a bit like a spaceship that is about to you know, fly at any uh, moment. But uh, what happens is that uh, the uh, thrusts that are uh, transmitted from the uh, rib, you know, uh, walls are uh, channeled, you know, uh, back. They are channeled uh, outwards to the uh, flying buttresses, which is why they are called the uh, flying. It's a very literal uh, term. And then uh, sometimes you have uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, double, you know, uh, thrust. And you have the uh, pinnacles, which uh, press down uh, upon uh, the uh, uh, flying buttresses uh, themselves. And this aerial uh, view uh, here uh, shows the uh, revelation and uh, exposure of the uh, structure. Structure is not something that is to be uh, hidden within uh, walls. It's uh, something that is to be exposed. And when it is uh, exposed, uh, the, um, the aesthetic configuration of the uh, carving that was uh, applied to other parts of the uh, church are uh, also uh, applied to uh, the uh, flying uh, buttresses uh, themselves. Uh, and uh, with these uh, flying uh, buttresses, the uh, imagination uh, knew uh, no uh, bounds. I mean, here uh, you see uh, the uh, this uh, lace-like uh, effect, these are uh, structural uh, elements. And yet, uh, on the uh, exterior, they uh, have a, um, a unity of the uh, architectural uh, vocabulary, which is that of the uh, stone uh, mason. So the stone mason is uh, the, uh, the architect, and he is also the uh, master uh, sculptor who uh, carves uh, each block of uh, stone. And when uh, structure and uh, construction and uh, the uh, plan is uh, so uh, intertwined, uh, is uh, so uh, unified and integrated, uh, every uh, the part of uh, the uh, blocks of you know, uh, stone will have a reason for uh, existence. And you can't take out you know, one uh, structure, uh, one you know, uh, component, uh, without uh, damaging uh, part of the uh, design, stability, and solidity of the uh, building. We saw uh, several examples. Uh, we don't need to remember uh, all these uh, names. In uh, Bourges, also, you see the uh, flying uh, buttresses, uh, especially in the uh, Chevet uh, part uh, here. Uh, the uh, uh, thrusts are being uh, transmitted to be uh, absorbed by these uh, piers, 
which are uh, weighted down with uh, double the pinnacles of here. And you have a, a forest of uh, uh, molded, attenuated uh, piers that give you the attenuated uh, feeling of uh, reaching heavenward. So while there is no dome here, once you are inside the uh, church, inevitably the eye is drawn uh, upwards. I mean, uh, you uh, uh, feel like you are spiritually uh, uplifted. And uh, all this uh, effect, as we mentioned yesterday, was enhanced with uh, music. So you have uh, the uh, titillation of the uh, eyesight, and also you hear the music which uh, reverberates uh, within uh, the uh, uh, holy uh, space, and uh, you feel you are in a rather uh, divine and uh, special uh, realm, which was uh, intended uh, to be in uh, any case. Then uh, I showed uh, a, a comparison of interior uh, elevations uh, from uh, Lao <coughs> to uh, Paris, Chartres, and uh, Amiens. And uh, you see the, uh, the tiers which you know, uh, changed from one to the other. In Lao, uh, you have uh, the uh, gallery and the tuforium. So uh, you have the uh, arcade, you have the uh, gallery, tuforium, and the uh, clerestory. And then uh, in these uh, examples, you have uh, the uh, gallery, you have the uh, triforium, uh, no, uh, I mean, you have the arcade, uh, sorry, you have the triforium, uh, no gallery, you have the uh, clerestory, and then you have the uh, variations. What I pointed out uh, yesterday was that uh, in this, uh, the uh, scale of the uh, building was not uh, very uh, significant with a, uh, a smaller scale, a less high uh, church could have uh, four uh, tiers, and one like uh, Amiya uh, could soar, you know, heavenward, and you know, have uh, three tiers instead of four. So the, uh, the stone uh, masons worked with the uh, variations to the uh, best of their uh, advantage. Again, a feeling of uh, soaring uh, high uh, inward is also reflected outside. The uh, structural uh, function of the uh, piers and the uh, pinnacles, and then you have the uh, tower, all draw the uh, eye toward uh, heaven. So in the city fabric, when you uh, saw this extraordinary uh, creation, uh, there was no question about uh, the uh, priority uh, of uh, typology which was uh, given to uh, the uh, special you know, church or the uh, cathedral within the uh, city, both in its sophistication, uh, the, um, the workmanship, uh, as well as the uh, scale compared with uh, other more ordinary uh, buildings. And here is the uh, view of Lao, uh, the one uh, with the uh, uh, arcade, the gallery, the arctiforium, and then the uh, clever story. So uh, you have the uh, light uh, coming in uh, from uh, the uh, you know, uh, gallery. Uh, the triforium is the uh, dead space. And uh, you have the uh, clever story. So it's uh, quite a well uh, lit uh, church uh, in uh, this uh, respect. The uh, outside uh, sequence of these uh, churches, uh, the, the uh, Gothic uh, churches, we said, uh, is very much like the developmental sequence of uh, Greek uh, sculpture. The uh, Greek uh, the architect or sculptor architect had to uh, uh, study uh, variation. He had to uh, study uh, proportion. If he changed the height, uh, the something uh, would uh, happen to the uh, width. If he uh, changed the spacing of the columns, something would happen to the perception of the uh, pediment. Everything affected each other. And uh, the progression was for uh, a more pleasing, well-proportioned uh, effect. Similar with the uh, Gothic uh, churches, if you look at the outside of Chartres Cathedral, yes, the attenuation, the verticality is there. But uh, looking at the uh, portals, even though uh, they are uh, highly uh, carved, uh, 
with uh, the uh, advertising and uh, display of uh, Christ and the scenes which were intended to be uh, dispensed to the congregation. And despite the uh, presence of the uh, rebels of Mingo, you see that it is rather opaque and the portals are not, you know, very uh, deep uh, here. Uh, the, uh, the, the lace-like uh, effect is uh, gradually uh, studied, and then uh, it uh, becomes uh, more uh, sophisticated as uh, time uh, goes on. So, in Notre Dame, you have a deeper portal than, you know, Chartres. If you look at the rose window in uh, Notre uh, Dame, compared with the uh, rose window of the uh, Chartres, uh, which is uh, a bit more uh, solid, with less glass than you know, a stone in uh, between. The uh, one in uh, Notre uh, Dame is uh, more uh, lace-like. And then if you compare Notre Dame to uh, Amiens uh, here, uh, this uh, lace-like configuration for the uh, rose window uh, becomes uh, almost uh, transparent with uh, Amia. In a similar way, the uh, deeper uh, portals uh, of you know, uh, Notre Dame compared to the uh, portals of you know, uh, Chartres, and then uh, comparing them to the uh, portals of uh, Amia, show that uh, the uh, verticality in every uh, respect, uh, the uh, portals are not only uh, deep, uh, the attracting like the uh, magnet in the Amia, but uh, the uh, elements uh, above them are uh, stretched uh, upward, uh, the, the repeating the uh, language of the uh, turrets and the uh, towers, and the entire uh, surface is uh, almost like a uh, lace. And uh, that you see to uh, a uh, extent in Notre uh, Dame, but you can clearly see the difference between uh, the two uh, facades. And Amia has this not only in the uh, uh, front you know, uh, facade, but also in the side you know, facade, you see the uh, working of the uh, turrets that have become uh, articulated with uh, projections on top of the uh, cones. Uh, every aspect of the uh, Gothic uh, church, we said, uh, was uh, a, a subject for uh, creative you know, carving by the master uh, maker. <coughs> uh, the, uh, the gargoyles, we uh, call these the uh, gargoyles, the uh, spouts could have uh, many different uh, configurations and they uh, served to uh, channel the uh, water uh, away to prevent the uh, damage of the uh, wall. In uh, Rems Cathedral, uh, again, uh, like uh, Amia, uh, you see uh, cavernous uh, the, the portals, uh, complete with uh, the uh, rose uh, windows, uh, complete with the uh, column uh, figures, and uh, the uh, portal has become even more uh, pointed in the uh, arch and the uh, archivolts which give the uh, depth. The uh, pointed arch here is accentuated even further by uh, stretching the uh, pediments uh, upward. So you have this uh, almost a breathing verticality which is constantly uh, <laughs> drawing the uh, building and the <laughs> stone uh, upwards. Uh, and uh, in this uh, you uh, see how much detailing there was. So you had to have uh, teams of uh, sculptors and teams of uh, stone uh, masons who would uh, travel from one project to uh, another and uh, set to uh, carve every single little uh, detail. Uh, when you had uh, bigger figural uh, pieces, maybe uh, the master uh, did those. And then for the smaller uh, buildings, uh, the uh, less uh, experienced, uh, uh, you know, uh, members of the uh, team would be uh, working. Uh, just like in the uh, Romanesque, the religious uh, messages were no less emphatic. Uh, the uh, portals, I mean, displayed uh, together, uh, not just uh, uh, rosettes or floral, you know, uh, motifs, 
but actual uh, people, I mean, saints like uh, busy bees, uh, the articulating, the receiving the uh, archivals, to uh, draw and concentrate the uh, focus on the uh, seated uh, Christ. And then uh, there are usually uh, scenes of the uh, heavenly uh, kingdom, and then scenes of uh, hell to uh, show in stark contrast uh, the um, uh, sinners and the uh, good. Uh, uh, because uh, Christ was the uh, redeemer, he was the uh, one who would uh, save you know, mankind, who would save uh, humanity, and for that reason, he is the most emphatic figure, centrally placed and done in a larger uh, scale, uh, standing out uh, clearly in the uh, composition. But the uh, uh, striking uh, features of you know, uh, the uh, uh, calmness and then the rather contorted uh, the, you know, psychic uh, feelings of the uh, sinners were uh, enough to uh, you know, draw the uh, attention. And people who could not read and write uh, could uh, see uh, these uh, different uh, figures and know uh, immediately uh, what uh, they were. And we should not uh, underestimate the uh, word of mouth, too. People talked about this. I mean, people who uh, came to the church and who went back to their homes uh, talked about uh, these uh, reliefs and uh, carvings, and uh, they would become uh, even uh, more emphatic with the uh, adult degree of imagination in uh, here, uh, say. So they became uh, very powerful tools for the uh, dissemination through architecture of a religious uh, creed. Uh, columns uh, uh, doubled, uh, or pilasters uh, doubled as uh, saints who uh, gave uh, an uh, image of solidity and an image, an image of uh, uh, trustworthiness as they uh, stood guard at the uh, entrance of uh, the, uh, the portals. The capitals, uh, too, were uh, very uh, popular. Uh, they used for uh, receiving sometimes continuous narratives, sometimes uh, individual uh, narratives. And uh, grotesque figures uh, abounded in many uh, uh, of these, as we shall see uh, shortly. Uh, the uh, greatest uh, breakthrough, uh, if we had to uh, single out uh, uh, an uh, aesthetic uh, component in addition to the uh, pointed arch, was uh, the uh, stained uh, glass uh, window made possible by the uh, uh, structural uh, uh, thinning out of the uh, wall. And with the uh, stained glass uh, window, uh, the uh, hierarchies that we see in the religious uh, art, in terms of narrative scenes, in terms of uh, Christ uh, flanked with the uh, angels, are uh, still uh, legible through uh, placement. So where they are placed, in the center, higher, <coughs> uh, lower, to the sides, whether you have a big panel or a small uh, panel, uh, created the uh, visual uh, hierarchies whereby uh, these uh, the stories could be uh, read and uh, talked about. And you can uh, recognize uh, all the uh, stories just as in mosaic art. There is no uh, difference. So it would be a very interesting thing to have a pilgrim, you know, who, uh, uh, who uh, would uh, travel say, from uh, Istanbul, Constantinople uh, at that time, from St. Savior in the Kora, and then to go and see a stained glass window and see what he thought. And their thoughts were probably different, uh, considering whether they would come from east going west or whether they came from west you know, going uh, east to uh, compare the visual effect of this. But they would be unified in uh, being able to uh, read. This is a visual literacy which would not have changed from uh, you know, Constantinople to uh, Paris of the uh, time, although the uh, language of the uh, messages uh, changed. Uh, Saint-Chapelle in uh, France uh, gives you uh, 
uh, one of the uh, masterful uh, examples uh, of uh, the uh, thinness uh, attained. It's almost like a steel frame, but we are talking about uh, stone here. So you can tell uh, the uh, mastery that was uh, achieved by these uh, people. So uh, we will uh, now uh, proceed on to uh, England. And then uh, we will uh, proceed to some of the uh, uh, examples that uh, followed. We said that uh, the uh, Gothic uh, cathedral uh, became the uh, focus of the uh, town. So usually you had the, uh, the Gothic cathedral in the center, whether it was in the countryside or whether it was in an urban uh, center, uh, the uh, scale of the houses, the uh, fields, you know, all uh, around served to uh, attract the uh, focus. But when we uh, look at the, um, you know, uh, the French, you know, uh, the examples, uh, with the uh, showing and the you know, unity, the flying buttresses. And when we uh, compare them to a British uh, example, uh, like uh, the one you see on the uh, right, you see that uh, a greater uh, longitudinality is uh, felt uh, here. It is a bit more <coughs> compartmentalized, and uh, some of the uh, detailing is rather uh, simple. And uh, the uh, British uh, <laughs> Gothic uh, did, you know, uh, undergo uh, changes in its own, and experts in the uh, English Gothic can uh, recognize a perpendicular style or an earlier uh, style, but we shall not go uh, into uh, those. But if you look at the Salisbury uh, Cathedral, you can uh, see that uh, the uh, tower, you know, at the uh, crossing. I mean, uh, the draws the eye upward, and this uh, spire could be seen from uh, anywhere in uh, Salisbury. Uh, it was definitely a uh, focus uh, to be uh, noted. And uh, the uh, verticality is to be seen uh, also uh, in the, uh, uh, the turrets that are to be seen on the uh, edges of the uh, transepts. But in this uh, church, we seem to uh, lack uh, the uh, kind of uh, unity, that uh, soaring you know, uh, effect uh, inside that we uh, noted in some of the uh, French examples that we uh, show. And when we look at the Wells Cathedral uh, also, uh, this uh, difference becomes even uh, more uh, uh, emphatic. Whereas uh, the uh, uh, the cathedrals in France, like uh, Amiens uh, or like uh, Rennes, uh, were soaring heavenward. Uh, we could almost say that with Wells Cathedral, even though it's quite a high uh, structure, rather than soaring upward, it seems to spread out sidewards, and it seems to have a rather uh, horizontal uh, effect. It is uh, spreading on both uh, sides, and you can't see a uh, clear, you know, uh, center, uh, you can't see a, a focus which draws the eye uh, upward. Yes, you have the uh, vertical accents, you have the uh, lancet, you know, uh, windows, you have tracers to a certain effect. But uh, all in all, the uh, wall is uh, what is uh, perceived more than what we saw in uh, Amia and uh, what we saw in uh, uh, Rems uh, cathedrals in uh, France. In fact, the uh, decorations uh, here uh, almost give the feeling that uh, they are not part of the wall, but that they are applied to the wall. Whereas in the uh, French uh, examples, uh, wall and decoration were uh, very much uh, integrated. You couldn't uh, you know, uh, take out the uh, decoration because uh, wall and the decoration were one and the same uh, thing. So here uh, you almost uh, have this uh, decoration which is uh, applied. And uh, furthermore, when you look at the uh, portals, uh, they seem uh, so timid 
they're like little uh, holes that you go into rather than uh, gigantic you know portals that advertise how you should you know enter the church and this is gothic uh, we are not talking about uh, romanesque architecture uh, even uh, in the uh, in fact in the uh, romanesque examples of uh, england uh, we saw durham you know uh, cathedral if you compare that with other examples in Europe, they're more similar. But once you get to the uh, Gothic uh, period, the British examples seem to have their own course of uh, uh, development uh, compared with the uh, French examples. Um, in addition to uh, Wells uh, Cathedral, if you uh, look at uh, this example here, you don't need to remember this. Yes, this is a bit... Uh, you know, uh, deeper than Wells Cathedral, but still, you have a rather, you know, a horizontal uh, appearance, uh, which uh, is um, uh, not uh, at all the uh, case in the French examples. And uh, looking inside the Salisbury Cathedral, which is uh, the uh, first uh, example that we saw, uh, this one, when we uh, look at the uh, interior uh, of uh, uh, this uh, here, uh, you see that uh, the horizontality that we saw in the uh, facade, the uh, lack of uh, lace-like uh, articulation, the uh, lack of a diaphanous, almost a transparent uh, wall, uh, is uh, also uh, different uh, here. Uh, rather than the continuous vertical uh, elements, that uh, uh, drew the eye upward in the uh, French uh, examples. In the Salisbury uh, Cathedral, uh, despite the pointed uh, arches, uh, despite the you know, uh, archivals, the uh, horizontal uh, effect, I mean the, uh, uh, the emphatic uh, horizontal uh, division of three uh, levels, the uh, uh, arcade, and then the gallery, there's no tuforium up here. And then you have the clerestory. Uh, the gallery is spacious. You could walk in the uh, gallery. You could walk in the you know, uh, arcade. Uh, the clerestory allowed the uh, light to come in. You have the uh, ribbed uh, walls, uh, which are you know, uh, pointed. But uh, all in all, uh, there is no tuforium. And uh, the uh, vertic vertical uh, effect that we uh, see is uh, compromised by the uh, emphatic uh, horizontality uh, that we uh, see in the uh, interior uh, elevation. The uh, face is quite uh, clear, despite the uh, plan which had uh, double uh, transepts, but uh, still uh, the uh, uh, perception can be said to be rather uh, different. Uh, in this uh, example, uh, again, uh, you see the, uh, the arcade, uh, you see a kind of uh, uh, the gallery uh, here, and then uh, you see the uh, clerestory. Uh, and uh, uh, in this also, uh, you have a focus on uh, the uh, chevet uh, part, but it is a rather horizontal uh, building, uh, despite the uh, attention which is being uh, drawn uh, upward. Uh, in this uh, example here, uh, yes, uh, the arcade level is uh, quite uh, high with the pointed uh, arches. You have the uh, gallery and then you have the uh, forum uh, there. But again, there is a uh, rather uh, horizontal uh, accent which repeats itself along the uh, longitudinality of the uh, church. So, uh, to uh, remind ourselves of uh, how the uh, ribbed uh, vault you know, came uh, about, we said that uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, Roman, uh, the Roman uh, you know, vaults in the uh, back uh, buildings, you had a, uh, you know, rather a squarish uh, section, which gave you the uh, point vault, but with the uh, rectangular, uh, you know, uh, plan of the, uh, <laughs> Gothic architect, uh, in contrast to the, uh, the Romanesque architect, uh, you uh, allowed uh, a, a different, you know, uh, screen for the uh, arch, for the uh, short and long sides, all of which 
met at the same uh, height. And when you uh, succeeded to break up these arches in this you know, form, and then you broke them up even you know, further as you became more uh, experienced, you uh, were uh, uh, allowing the uh, distribution of uh, the uh, forces you know, coming down on very uh, thin uh, points to uh, free the uh, wall. And uh, this uh, could take uh, many different uh, effects uh, in uh, England and you know, France. The uh, division gave you these uh, very uh, intriguing uh, configurations. And in uh, England, you even have a fan-like uh, distribution of the, uh, the bolts which uh, met in the uh, center that you don't see in uh, France. And uh, this uh, uh, alters the uh, interior uh, configuration. Uh, you don't need to know this. So you have a, a quadrino part-type vault, the simple vault that we uh, know from you know, uh, France. And then uh, you have uh, this you know, kind of vault, and then this uh, fan vault, which we shall see uh, examples of that uh, <laughs> allows the play with the roof. So the facade of the uh, British uh, church may have been horizontal and not uh, so lace-like and articulated like the uh, French example, but in the uh, <laughs> inside, they uh, worked with very different uh, vaulting uh, solutions that are <laughs> characteristic of the uh, British uh, architecture. So, uh, again, uh, we'll see uh, examples which uh, progress from uh, the more you know, simple to the uh, more uh, sophisticated. Uh, here uh, you see that uh, the uh, ribs are being accentuated with uh, bosses, uh, again, revealing the uh, structure at the top of the uh, roof. This does not allow you know, more light to uh, come in but uh, the uh, roof uh, configuration will uh, alter the definition of interior uh, space. Uh, in this uh, example, again, you see the uh, ribs opening up to uh, the uh, highest uh, part in the uh, center, focusing the uh, attention on the uh, apse by emphasizing a horizontal uh, aspect of the uh, church. And those uh, ribs, uh, I mean the, uh, the ribs that we uh, saw uh, here, which were uh, suggested, are uh, becoming uh, more uh, transparent and skeletal-like uh, here. Uh, they uh, repeat themselves, meeting at the uh, center. And here, if you uh, look at the uh, ceiling, you see an extraordinary uh, skeletal uh, configuration which is a uh, mastery no less than those of the uh, uh, French uh, masons that were uh, working. The uh, fan uh, vault uh, that you see uh, in many uh, churches could sometimes have this very umbrella effect, uh, fanning out from uh, columns, as you see uh, here uh, from the uh, high descent, and then uh, they met at uh, points uh, which were uh, emphasized further by uh, bosses. So uh, the uh, structure uh, could be said to be exposed in these examples uh, as well. Uh, the, uh, the structural you know, configuration is emphasized even uh, further by uh, putting in those uh, bosses so uh, you knew that this is a, a church of a, a sound uh, configuration. Here, uh, another uh, fan uh, vault uh, showing uh, how the uh, vault is soaring uh, upward and uh, spreading uh, to uh, uh, envelope and meet with the uh, other uh, fan vaults uh, configuring the uh, roof. And you have a, a forest of uh, fan vaults as you see uh, here something not seen in uh, France uh, at all. And uh, these uh, fan walls uh, would then um, uh, receive uh, applied uh, decoration. 
Uh, you saw the decoration on the facade of uh, the exterior facade of Wells Cathedral. And here the uh, candles are uh, given, you know, uh, decorations, uh, rosettes, uh, almost uh, details that you see in the windows outside, but they are now uh, transferred to the uh, fan uh, wall to uh, give a unity of uh, vocabulary, but used in a, a very uh, different kind of uh, way. Uh, in uh, King's College Chapel, uh, the, here uh, you uh, could perhaps uh, remember uh, this uh, example. Uh, the uh, uh, ceiling uh, itself uh, may be said to have a, a plan of its own. So uh, the uh, plan of the uh, uh, chapel uh, here is uh, a thin you know, longitudinal uh, plan, uh, but the uh, fan walls, which rise above attenuated uh, piers that spread out toward the uh, ceiling, uh, create a kind of stone canopy uh, effect, uh, which uh, gives the characteristic to the uh, space uh, here which is uh, lit by thin, tall uh, windows and uh, stained uh, glass, and the stained uh, glass fragmentation of light underneath this uh, stone uh, canopy is uh, uh, the primary uh, element which defines the uh, interior. Um, the, uh, the predilection, the uh, concern of the stonemason to uh, utilize uh, every single element to uh, convey a, a narrative or a story or an uh, image is uh, to be seen in an interesting way in the inside of the uh, British uh, churches. Uh, I'm showing you one example from Norwich Cathedral. For the less careful observer, if you look inside Norwich Cathedral, uh, you will be uh, impressed when by uh, the longitudinal aspect, you will be attracted by the uh, fan walls. But if you um, are not aware beforehand, you probably will not see the uh, bosses. I mean, you will see these uh, bosses as if they are little blobs of uh, stone somewhere uh, there because they are so uh, high. But if you uh, look more uh, carefully, you will see that uh, every single one of these bosses here, I mean, there are several here, and then there are bigger ones, from one end uh, all the way to the uh, next, there are uh, hard uh, details. So uh, above you, at a point where you can't touch, at a point where you can't even see here properly, uh, you will have uh, uh, little you know, uh, images uh, here, uh, giving you uh, uh, cryptic and sometimes uh, straightforward uh, images uh, about uh, baptism, about the uh, sacraments, the sacred uh, bread, uh, the uh, fish, uh, the uh, holy uh, supper, and uh, they would be spread out throughout the uh, church. <coughs> Not very emphatic perhaps, but they are uh, there. And in uh, many uh, churches in uh, England, one of the most interesting things you can do is to go with the binoculars. And uh, if you uh, uh, walk in the church, you know, get your uh, binoculars and look at the different uh, details. The uh, grotesque details of demons, of uh, fantastical, uh, horrible looking uh, creatures is uh, quite amazing with the detail that uh, they are uh, uh, carved and put into various uh, points of, of the uh, church. So uh, the uh, scale and the uh, visibility are not uh, really determinants to uh, work these out uh, less. The uh, detailing is there, the narrative is uh, there, and it's enough to know that they are there even though you may not be able to see all the details with the clarity of a you know, Gothic uh, portal. Uh, 
uh, that's uh, a point to be uh, kept uh, in uh, mind. And when we look at the trajectory of the uh, Gothic in uh, various uh, other parts of uh, Europe, uh, both uh, synchronically and uh, diachronically, uh, we uh, get uh, interesting uh, trajectories. Similar to the uh, Romanesque in the Italy, the Gothic in the <laughs> Italy is also very, very uh, different. Uh, we had seen uh, uh, the, uh, the San Miniato al Monte in the Romanesque uh, period in uh, Italy. And here we are looking at Orvieto uh, Cathedral. Uh, there is no church uh, like this in uh, France, in England, in Germany. This is uh, clearly an you know, example uh, which is uh, Gothic and which is not Romanesque but which is in uh, Italy. Uh, the uh, polychromy that we had seen in uh, San Miniato al Monte, uh, suggesting you know, Roman uh, marble, uh, is uh, also present uh, here, a very polychromatic uh, surface, even though we don't speak of uh, marble you know, uh, plots, but we're speaking of uh, narratives we are speaking of, you know, uh, figures, uh, very uh, highly, you know, articulated, but not in that lace-like uh, sense. The, um, uh, we can't say this is a very horizontal uh, church, like Wells Cathedral in uh, England. Uh, and even though uh, there are soaring elements, like the uh, high, you know, uh, pediment here, the uh, tympanums are here, the uh, turrets, uh, there's no question whatsoever that this does not have the soaring quality of uh, a French you know, cathedral uh, either, not in the uh, least. And yet, an attempt has been made to draw the eye uh, upward, and yet the uh, detailing that we uh, see is more subdued. Yes, there are archivolts, uh, yes, a depth has been uh, given to the uh, main portal and the side uh, portals. But uh, you uh, notice that the main arch uh, here is almost semicircle. Yes, the uh, uh, isosceles uh, triangle pulls the eye uh, upward and even uh, more uh, uh, the attenuated isosceles uh, triangle on the side point the eye upward, but the, uh, the pointed arches that you see on the flanks are not in the uh, center. So in the uh, peak, in the height of the uh, Roman uh, land, uh, the uh, Roman uh, legacy, it is uh, difficult to uh, cast aside that uh, classical you know, vocabulary and uh, to uh, come up with uh, the new uh, vocabulary of the uh, uh, North you know, uh, the European uh, stone uh, masons or the uh, French stone masons. The uh, Gothic uh, transformation is here, but it is done in a uh, synthesis in a uh, very localized uh, manner. And if you go and ask your friend uh, Seda Bertan, she can probably tell you about the uh, Gothic examples in uh, Cyprus during the Lusignan period. There were uh, uh, Frankish uh, kings uh, there, and they built you know, Gothic uh, cathedrals, but none of them look like Gothic cathedrals in you know, <laughs> Europe, and they don't even look like the Gothic you know, cathedrals in, in uh, Italy. Uh, centuries uh, later, when we uh, get to the uh, Renaissance, or even to our uh, time, as I said uh, earlier, there were uh, two uh, main uh, traditions in Europe. One was the uh, Gothic tradition, which continued in a uh, distillation, and the other one was the uh, classical uh, tradition. And when we uh, go to uh, Italy, in fact, when we go to uh, Venice, uh, the, and when we look at uh, the uh, church, uh, the Il Redentore, uh, the church of the uh, Redeemer, the uh, savior of you know, uh, mankind, uh, Christ being the uh, savior. Uh, uh, Palladio, 
is uh, not uh, choosing the uh, language of uh, the um, uh, northern uh, European uh, designers. He is also not using the uh, language of the uh, Gothic uh, masters in Italy, like Orvieto, or the Romanesque language, like San Miniato al Monte. Instead, he is uh, going back <coughs> to the uh, classical uh, tradition, and he is uh, creating a facade with uh, a well-proportioned uh, configuration, uh, with uh, proper you know, uh, columns uh, in the classical uh, manner, not very uh, transformed, a kind of a pediment, a, a petal style, and he uh, puts this uh, in front of the uh, church, which is uh, a very uh, a simple uh, white uh, church with a very pale color also in the uh, inside to uh, convey a feeling of uh, calmness, not this uh, busy effect, no uh, carvings in you know, a profusion, no uh, polychromy, but uh, preferring the uh, classical uh, language uh, in you know, uh, the uh, century uh, in which he uh, worked. And if we uh, go to uh, Finland, for example, uh, further to the north, to uh, Scandinavia, and we look at the major uh, cathedral uh, here, uh, in this uh, I mean 19th century uh, church, uh, we see uh, an uh, attitude which uh, is not very different than the attitude of Palladio. Uh, again, uh, the uh, classical uh, language is uh, preferred. Yes, you have the uh, domes, uh, which uh, this is a Lutheran cathedral. It's not even Orthodox, which uh, reminds uh, of the Byzantine uh, tradition. But to the uh, domical uh, tradition, uh, the, what is uh, preferred is the um, pristine aesthetic of uh, the uh, classical uh, language uh, done with easily recognizable uh, capitals, a well-proportioned uh, pediment, uh, nothing you know, postmodern here. The classical is very much in the uh, uh, classical uh, tradition. And you probably would be uh, very intrigued by this example here, uh, the uh, work of Fischer von Erlach in uh, Vienna. Uh, again, you have the uh, classical tradition. You don't have the uh, Gothic, you know, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the uh, medieval, you know, uh, tradition uh, in, in uh, Europe. The preference is not for that, but for the uh, classical uh, tradition. And what is more, uh, in this uh, church in uh, Vienna, there is something that you probably uh, remember and recognize from uh, Rome. Uh, you have these two uh, columns, which are very reminiscent of the uh, column of uh, Trajan in the middle of Rome. If you remember the form of uh, Trajan, there was a column with two libraries, and then there was the, uh, the markets uh, behind it. And Fischer von Erna is utilizing um, a uh, traditional understanding of the uh, classical, but uh, to that uh, classical understanding, he is adding something very uh, Roman. So the inspiration here is certainly not the Romanesque and not the uh, Gothic in uh, Europe. So the trajectories that were uh, taken in the uh, later you know, uh, centuries in uh, religious uh, architecture are very, very uh, different. And again, uh, another example from uh, Finland, uh, Sanat Senavo, a uh, architect, a uh, contemporary uh, Finnish architect, uh, done uh, even less than uh, 10 years ago, is uh, clearly uh, utilizing the uh, Gothic uh, tradition. He is not interested in the, uh, uh, the, the classical uh, tradition of the capital city, you know, Helsinki, uh, which is uh, done in a rather conservative uh, way. Uh, and let alone the classical uh, tradition, he is utilizing the Gothic uh, tradition with the uh, evocation and inspiration of the pointed uh, arch. But the inspiration of the Gothic arch uh, here 
is not an imitation. It is a uh, reworking with the uh, a source of the uh, architect's uh, the creation, very obvious, but with his uh, interpretation done in a different uh, manner. And when uh, Salak Senabo uh, designed this uh, building, he said that he was uh, inspired by uh, the marine life, the lake life. In Finland, uh, there are uh, the, like a uh, hundred thousand uh, lakes. The country is full of uh, lakes. So Finnish people uh, live, you know, uh, in uh, cottages uh, around these, you know, lakes. Fishing is a very favorite uh, pastime in the summer. And this uh, architect says that uh, uh, he uses uh, the fish as a metaphor. Fish is associated with, you know, uh, Christ in the iconography, the Christian iconography. But he is combining it with the uh, fish in the Finnish lakes. And so I don't have a picture of the outside of this uh, church. But the outside is a bit like the uh, scales of a fish. And the inside is uh, the, a bit like um, evoking a Christian early uh, legend. There's a very famous story about <coughs> Jonas and the whale. Uh, and according to the uh, story, uh, Jonah is swallowed by the uh, whale. <laughs> so uh, the uh, architect takes that, takes that story and uh, uh, he uh, combines an early Christian iconographical uh, story uh, with the uh, evocation of the Gothic tradition to uh, create an interior uh, space which is uh, reminiscent of the uh, belly of the whale being swallowed. So the metaphor is very clear. The church is intended to take you in. I mean, Jonah was uh, swallowed because he was a good you know, uh, Christian. And here, uh, the good Christians are supposed to come uh, in here. But there is a kind of mystery <coughs> as well. Uh, there is no window, uh, no other you know, uh, windows than uh, the uh, major you know, uh, window at the end. And the source of light there uh, and the uh, reflections become rather mysterious. So it is light, it is not very dark, but uh, that uh, mystery, utilizing early Christian, utilizing you know, uh, Gothic, but uh, not imitating any of them, but using them as a source of uh, imagination, uh, the, uh, the you know, uh, church was uh, created uh, in this uh, way. And uh, a figure which you might know uh, better, Antoni uh, Gaudi, in the uh, Sapeta Familia, I'm sure you all uh, know this, uh, you have a very different interpretation. I mean, you can't uh, talk about a uh, Gothic, or you can't talk about a uh, classical uh, here, but you can talk about uh, Gaudi's uh, own personal uh, inspiration. And yet, for the uh, devout uh, Christians, the uh, messages that could be uh, read in the uh, Romanesque period or the, uh, the you know, Gothic period in the uh, Byzantine period uh, would be recognizable. So if you had a time machine and brought someone from medieval Istanbul and someone from uh, medieval you know, Paris and put him in front of the uh, Sagrada Familia of you know, Gaudi, he would look and he probably uh, would be a bit confused by this you know, appearance. But if he stared long enough, he would be able to recognize some of the symbolism. The uh, three uh, uh, sites, facades of the uh, church, each one has four uh, towers. The number four was important. Uh, for the uh, evangelists and the gospels, the uh, distribution of the uh, books. So uh, that's a special uh, number. And then if you look uh, more uh, carefully, you will be able uh, to see some of the uh, same you know, uh, narratives, but put in a rather uh, different uh, configuration. Uh, but if you uh, go to uh, the capital of you know, Brazil, you know, Brasilia, and look at the project of uh, Oscar, you know, uh, Niemeyer. Uh, 
uh, it might be uh, very difficult for the person in the time machine. <coughs> he will not recognize anything classical. He will not recognize uh, anything, uh, you know, Gothic uh, here. Uh, uh, Oscar uh, Niemeyer uh, was uh, an atheist. I mean, he uh, did not, uh, you know, believe in, in Christianity. And yet uh, he was uh, uh, open to building a uh, cathedral for, you know, uh, Brazil. And he wanted to uh, evoke uh, the, uh, the power of, you know, religion in a way. So he has this uh, concrete hyperbolic, you know, uh, arts, uh, which to some people um, <laughs> resemble a, a crown, I mean, uh, the crown of Christianity, but that was not what he uh, intended. And for some uh, others, uh, they uh, remind of uh, hands, you know, opening up with, you know, uh, prayer. So uh, again, uh, you see how far uh, the uh, messages may be, you know, uh, transmitted. So uh, I leave you with this, uh, you know, uh, the gesticulation for, you know, uh, help from the, you know, uh, heavens. I think uh, all humanity uh, needs some kind of, you know, uh, direction. Whether this is a Christian teaching, whether it's a Buddhist teaching or an Islamic teaching, uh, sometimes humanity needs to be put on, you know, a good uh, path. So I will uh, leave you uh, there. Um, I uh, don't have uh, the date for the uh, exam, uh, but uh, the secretary is working on it. Uh, it will be after the juries, as you uh, know, so you can follow uh, that. And uh, it will be exactly the same as you know the first and second midterms. And please use your uh, experience on the first and second uh, midterms. Uh, and if you have been coming to the class uh, regularly, there should be no reason whatsoever uh, not to do uh, well. Okay? So uh, good luck with your uh, juries <coughs> and um, your uh, drawing week uh, next week.